Hi, in this video I'm going to troubleshoot a problem on an Intel Nook. Intel Nook is a small mini PC as you can see, there it is, this is the whole form factor of the PC. And what is happening is there's a power button on the top here and we press it and nothing happens. As you can see I press it, normally this would go blue, on other Intel Nooks there's an entire illumination around here um, this one has got an LED somewhere here I think there it is here and it's supposed to come on and even if you press and hold uh, for four seconds still no uh, turn on so there's obviously something wrong so this is how I have fault traced this first thing is to see if the power cord is damaged so I've just looked at the power cord and the integrity of the cord is fine an important place to look is just here near the strain relief to see if maybe somebody has uh, pulled it too hard and overall I'm happy with the integrity although you still have to take a measurement so what measurement am I talking about I'll show you right now this must be plugged in so I'm gonna go plug this in now right now it's plugged in which means that there should be it should be the 19 volts sitting here so what you're going to do is you're going to take a multimeter, set it to volts, and the outside is earth, and the ins or, or uh, zero volts, and the inside is the positive, and there you can see I've got my 19 volts. So immediately I can tell that it's not the power cord, it's not the AC adapter, the uh, power adapter that's in the plug point. Uh, this part is all working. So now we plug it in here, and what I noticed is. If I put a sound system in here, maybe a little Logitech 2 speaker system, when I plug it in, the Logitech power comes on, which means there is power on the USBs. So the power is available on the main bus. So that means there's something else wrong. When I press the power button, nothing is happening. So it's time to open this up. All right, these are star. Okay, make sure everything is unplugged, there's nothing uh, connected to the nook. Gently pull this out, keeping in mind that there is a hard drive cable that might be uh, holding it. Okay, you can do it this way if you want. There it's coming. Okay. Now, as I pull this, I can see a hard drive cable. Um, there, there it is, hard drive cable and then another cable. So I've, I've released these two cables. The one is going there and the other one is going here. Now, if you were using a SATA drive, here it would be. Uh, it would be here, while well, in this case we're using a solid state drive. So that's the hard drive, while in uh, other uh, setups you might find a hard drive there. So this is your SATA cable and this is your power for your hard drive so there would be power and SATA so I've unplugged those how you unplug them is you just pull them vertical don't pull don't uh, bend them don't look for any clips you just pull straight up all right now I've unplugged that now if you were using a SATA cable a SATA drive it's maybe a good idea to try and switch it on at this point all right so I've plugged it in and I'm going to try and turn it on and still nothing. Even if I press it a few times, press and hold, nothing is happening. And the reason why I'm turning it on at this point is because the SATA drive, if it was faulty, um, it is, uh, the, according to Intel on their website, they say that that could also stop the Intel Nook from turning on. Right, so now I unplug it and I go deeper. Right, so I just want to draw your attention to the website. This is on intel.com and you can see the title is No Boot, No Power Issues on Intel Nook Products. Okay, so they're giving you six steps. Um, you can open each one of these and find out what could be the cause. Now, just looking at step one, uh, this is mostly if you haven't connected uh, a drive or the memory and it's got it to do with how the LED blinks. Is it blinking one and, and so forth, blinking once per second and so forth. Okay, but our problem is a bit different. There's no LED and it is completely 
off. And that is where I come to this part of the table. And as you can see, it says bad power source. Try connecting the Intel NUC to a different AC outlet. So that's what we, we, we effectively ascertained is does the Intel NUC have get power, the 19 volts? We've checked that. And then it says drive problems. Try a different hard drive or SSD. And this is what we are actually doing. Um, and now we say different power issue. And you can go through this step by step if my uh, solution does not solve your problem. And then also showing you how to do the bias reset. But if you can't watching the video, you'll see that uh, my problem was a little bit different to this. Now you can disconnect your RAM. How, do you see how I did that? You open it. So when you take this out, just be careful of static. You can wear an earth strap, which puts your level to the same level as earth, which is zero volts. So you take this out. If you don't have an earth strap, then this is what you do. You just only touch the sides. You see there? The sides are not going to uh, discharge static and you hold it like that. Now you put this down gently and then you can try and turn it on again. Still nothing. Now I'm going to take out this SSD. Again, uh, just touch the back here and you pull it out gently and just inspect it and it looks like it's got some liquid on it. So I'm going to just uh, dry that with a blower and then you try and turn on once again. Uh, still nothing. No. Right. Now I'm going to take out the main board. There's a screw over there. One. And there's another one on the other side. Two. Now to get this out, um, it's best if you do it this way and you tap it on the table. You see like that. Now there are two wires there for wireless which you can decide if you're going to pull them out there, left and right, um, or signal and earth. Um, so you can take them out now if you want to. You just peel it up off. One, don't pull on the wire. Try and actually unclip it with your nail. Right. Okay, so there we have the main board and the uh, case. And now when I look at the main board, all right, so at this point, it might be a good idea to blow it out with a, a blower just to get rid of any excess dust. Right, now what I notice is there seems to be a bit of liquid here around the switch which is quite interesting because if I look over here there's nothing stopping if you spilled water or juice here uh, it could come right through there's no like uh, protection against spillage here uh, for example say someone spilled something there we go let's put a bit of water there and can you see how it, it comes right through look right onto the table there it is so I can immediately see that on this board, somebody has spilled something around here. So they've probably bumped there. I mean, they've probably bumped some juice or something and it got into the switch. So now I need to dry this because you don't want water seeping in. And if juice got into the switch, the switch is going to be a bit faulty. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray something called contact chemi, which deoxidizes the switch or basically it cleans it. So just, just a tiny bit. There we go. That's it. And now you just massage it in and press it a few times. And what it does is it cleans the contacts here. Okay. And you don't have to worry if you spill the contact chemi around here. Um, it's not a problem. If you see a bit of the, the spray, the contact chemi, uh, anywhere here, it's fine. I mean, you don't have to even worry about drying it. Uh, right, so there we go. Now I'm going to test it with the switch now uh, being cleaned. 
so I'm going to plug it in again. Now at this point, if you feel more comfortable putting it in the uh, casing, well, you're welcome to. But I just want to see if it was that switch that was stopping it from turning on. So I'm going to plug it in here. Just be very careful now. And the front of it is there. And I'm going to just switch it and let's see. Just holding on the edges. Ah, look at that. Look, the fan immediately. Ah, look at that. That's the problem. Okay, so I'm going to unplug it quickly. And now I'm going to uh, reassemble it because I think that was the problem. Right, you line these RF cables there and you press it with your nail in. Turn them a little bit. You can see there's a th space here for them. Uh, make sure you don't catch it on the side. You don't want to uh, gouge into the wire along the side. So this one, I'm just going to turn it a bit like that and uh, let it be fed through as follows. Okay, now what you're trying to make sure is that the RF cable does not block the uh, SD card slot there. Right, so you just seat this nicely. Right, there we go. SD card, everything is fine. Nothing is being pulled tight. If I check the RF cables, they're fine. Right, so now you can put the screws in. Note the recess there and the um, lip there. Okay, so that was the problem. The button had uh, some uh, dirt in it and just using some contact chemi that solved the problem. Right, thanks for watching. Cheers.